What's up guys, welcome back to Gabriel Aguiar Prod and today it's all about Meteor Rain with VFX Graph. We are going to see how to create this shower of meteors where you can control the rate, the direction, the radius, the initial position, all of this that you are seeing in this short tutorial. It's a great exercise to understand how trails, trigger events and collisions work in VFX Graph among other things of course. All of this is possible thanks to my patrons. If you guys are interested in having access to this project, there's a link in the description. And by supporting me, you also get access to many more projects and assets that you can use in your games. So, without further ado, let's jump right into it. By the way, I'm using Unity 2020.3 with the Universal Render Pipeline and in the Package Manager I have installed Visual Effect Graph and make sure you go to Edit, in Preference, in Visual Effect, you turn on Experimental Operator slash Blocks so you can have access to more features. Alright, so this is what we are going to create. You will be able to control the direction, to control from how high they will spawn, their radius, their color, their size, a lot of things. So we want to start by pressing right click in a folder and in visual effects we want the visual effect graph. We can rename it to VFX graph underscore meteor rain and then drag and drop it to our scene. The way we open this up is by pressing the edit button. From there you can dock this window whatever you want. Right, so first things first, we want to change their initial position of the particles. So if we search for cone, we will get a set position shape cone, which is perfect. If you open this arc cone, you can control the radius. So let's create a float for this and call it radius. Default value of 5 should be enough. Connect the radius 0 and the radius 1. And here we go. It's pounding in a radius. But only in the edge of this cone. You can change it by setting the position mode to volume instead. Cool. Now we also want to control from how high they will spawn. So let's create a vector tree and call it initial position. We can control their initial position. Let's say the Y is 10. And we can connect it to the center of this arc cone. And as you can see, it's spawning up there from now. And that's how you control from where this will spawn. By the way, we can also control the rate. Let's create a float, default value of 5, and connect it to the constant spawn rate which is at 16, which is quite a lot for the meteor effect, which is, quite a lot, which is quite a lot for the meteor rain. Now our next step is the motion, right? We want this to go down, hit the ground and spawn a few things. So we can create another vector tree, but this time for the direction. We can control their direction. For now, let's say it's minus 25 in the Y and 10 in the Z. And we can connect this to the B option of the set velocity. As you can see, some of them are already falling down. Now for the A option, which we can consider as the minimum, we are creating a range. We can multiply this value by something like 80%, which is 0 0.8. The minimum only has 20% less than the maximum, basically. Okay, so we have the radius, the initial position, and now the direction. Now it can be useful to control the lifetime, so you can create a float for that and connect it to the A and B or simply set the lifetime to be not random. But what matters here is default value of 3, lifetime, ok. So like I was saying, what matters now is adding a trail to these particles. We are using this particle system only for the motion and the initial position and that's it. From there we can add a lot of things. For example, we want to add a trail to this. So in the update particle, we can search for trigger. We can choose the trigger event rate. And the way we trigger particles now is, for example, we can create a simple ribbon, which is for trails. Move it around here. And now we cannot connect to the spawn. What we need instead of the spawn is a GPU event. Like this. And now we can connect the trigger to the GPU event. In other words, the ribbon should follow the particles, but it isn't, because it needs to know a few details. For example, we don't need this turbulence, we can delete it. Let's just increase the size of these particles that are falling. We can remove the set size of our life and add with spacebar a set size, default value of 1. 
so we can see what's happening. So first we need to increase the capacity to around 1000. We still don't see much, but if you look closely to the world origin, we see some ribbons being spawned. And that's because of this add position. We don't want it, remove it. What we want is to inherit the position from the falling particles. We can select the inherit source position. And as you can see, it magically appears now behind following the falling particles. From here, we can work on the aspect of the meteor falling. For example, we can start by controlling the trail lifetime with a float with the default value of 0 0.4 and connect to the set lifetime. Alright, that's something. Let's remove this, let's push this up. Okay. Oh, and by the way, from now on, we can disconnect the output particle quad. We are only going to work with the ribbons, with the trails. So, size, it's important. The set size of our life will control the proportion of the trail. It starts large and then it becomes thinner. Let me push this around here. The last key, we can select the handle and push it to something like this. Okay, will look nicer. This orient block, we can say it's face camera position, no big deal. And if you look closely, they are kind of flickering. It's not smooth, the trails. That's because our trigger event on rate, it's over time instead of over distance. It will be a little bit heavier, but it will be much smoother. Okay, so over distance and now. And now for the color, we can remove the set color because we can control it with the set color of a life. With this gradient down here, these trails, we are going to create two trails. These ones are going to the back. They should be darker. So I'm going to choose a dark red and for the last key, black, completely black, like this. Now we can say it's alpha, so it renders the black values. Okay, that's something. Actually, I'm going to make this red even darker. Okay, like this. Oh, and let's just control the size with the set size. Don't forget to set the size of our life to multiply the composition. Great, now we can create a float just to control the trail size. Default value of 0 0.8, for example, and connect it to the set size. All right, that's looking great. Now, here's a little trick. Let's first select these and create a group. Call it meteorites or meteors or something like that. You can delete the output part because we don't need it. And this one, another group, and call it the trail back. Now we control C and then control V, we can copy the trail back and rename it to trail front. Now the idea is super simple, is decrease a little bit the trail size, multiply it by 0 0.5 or less, for example. And then we can create a gradient like this one, where it's super bright in the beginning and then it fades out to darker values. The intensity, as you can see, it's 4 for the second key and for the first key it's 10, the intensity. Nothing happens so far because we still need to connect the trigger event from the meteors to this GPU event of the trails front and as soon as we do it, we get a really nice feeling. It's looking pretty cool. For now, we can simply create a texture to d and call it the trails texture. We can connect it to the trail back right here and to the trail front as well right here. And well, in my case, I already have a trail, but you can select the default part or another texture or create a text like this one, as you can see, with Crete or Photoshop. You can watch my videos, I explain a lot of times how to create textures, or you can watch this course where you will get a bunch of lectures on how to create textures and much, much more with VFX Graph as well. There's a link in the description, by the way, with a nice discount in case you're interested. Once you have selected the texture, now Oh, let's just decrease the trail lifetime of the trail front, multiply it with a smaller value like 0 0.5, so it becomes shorter. As you can see, now we get the trail back, which is a little bit darker, and the trail front, which is really bright. For example, the trail back could be even darker. Something like this, yeah, that looks awesome, look at this. What a nice color palette that we have here. Okay, let's move on. Now, 
To add those elements, like some sparks, whenever that's hit the ground, we need first to go to the meteors. And as you can see, it's passing right to the ground, so we need first to control to destroy them on impact. VFX graph is bad with collisions, by the way. For now, this works nice on flat planes. I hope in the future we will get a collide with mesh or something like that. So I'm gonna pick the collide with plane, which is more than enough for this tutorial. And as you can see, they are bouncing off. What really matters for us is the lifetime loss to be at one. Basically, destroys the meteors and the trails, everything, as soon as it hits this plane. That's great because now, if we press spacebar, we can search for trigger event on die. Basically, whenever this meteor dies, we want to do something with that. What we want to do is spawn a few sparks. So let's create a simple particle system. Delete this spawn block, create a GPU event and connect from the trigger on die. We got a few particles in the origin of the world, but in order for them to spawn where the meteors hit, we need to inherit the source position. We can search for that, this one. As you can see now it spawns particles where the meteors died. Let's increase the capacity to 100 at least, it should be maybe a bit more, that's fine. And then we can simply decrease the lifetime to be between 0 0.3 and 0 0.8. And for the motion, the set velocity, 2 and 7 for the y and 5 and minus 5 for the x and z. That's a nice motion. If we go back to our meteor in the trigger event on die, we can increase the count to 10 and we get a bunch of nice particles. 10 is a good number for this. Now, let's pimp this out. Today I'm pimping all of this stuff, I guess. And let's go ahead and choose and let's go ahead and choose the default particle that comes with Unity for the sparks. Orient is a long velocity so we can stretch them. And to stretch them, we need a set scale. Let's make sure it's random. In the inspector, random between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3 in the x and 0 0.5 and 1 in the y. Of course, I already know these values to speed up the tutorial. You can test different values, of course. Oh, and we can control the set size as well. Let's make sure it's random between 0 0.8 and 1 0.2. Down here, set size over life needs to be in multiplied composition, otherwise, it overwrites any previous value. And for the curve, one that goes from big to small. We'll add a nice touch to the sparks. Looking good. We simply need to copy this gradient and paste it right here and here we go. We got a nice motion. We can set them to additive by the way, we don't need dark colors in this. And if you want you can increase the intensity in the beginning by adjusting the gradient. Now we can also go ahead and add gravity in the update part, it always adds a nice touch. You can make gravity random with a random number between 0 and minus 10 and connect it to the Y of the gravity. And here we go. Very random motion for the sparks. Looking great. Let's create a group and call it sparks or something else. And for one of the final touches, let's add a mark on the ground. So it looks like it has burned the ground. So we can start with a simple particle system, create a group immediately and call it the impact decal. That's right, it's going to be a decal, a forward decal. Down here we can delete the output particle quad, drag a line and create a forward decal. What does it need? Well, it needs a random set size. In this case, set size, then random. Between 1.5 and 3.3. .3. It's tripping a lot because we need to rotate it. Up here in the initialized part, we can use a set angle and rotate it 90 degrees in X. And now they are properly aligned with the ground. Remember, this works well with planes. From there on, it's very limited. Okay, for the texture, Default particle should be enough. 
Like I said, if you want to learn more about creating textures, check out the course in the description. Now, we can copy blocks by selecting them and holding control and simply drag and drop like this and here we go, we have a gradient which is way too strong. We don't need these keys, we only need these two last keys because this one is going to be dark. We are going to create another one to make it look brighter. Push the dark key to the middle more or less and create a gradient similar to this one. Okay, that's nice. But yeah, they still don't spawn where the meteors hit. So let's remove the spawn up here and create a GPU event and now we can create another trigger event on die with only one for the count and connect it like this to the impact decal and and then we simply need to inherit the source position and look at these boys and girls it's looking fantastic seriously i think it's an awesome trick and i'm kind of rushing through this because otherwise it will be a super long tutorial but the idea the most important idea is here and it's looking awesome Let's copy this output particle forward decal. One of the last touches that we can do, we can make it smaller between 1 and, dot 1 and 2 dot 5, and then we can select the bright gradient, this one. And as you can see, we can actually shorten this gradient so it leaves less that bright spot, it fades out faster. And we can also set it to additive, we don't want dark colors. We already have the other output particle forward decal that takes care of the burnt mark, the dark mark that lives on the ground. Seriously, it's pretty much done guys, that's it. I've shown you the basic and even more. Please do ask questions that you may have in the comments, I will try to answer them ASAP. If you actually want to have access to these meteors, all of them and many more projects, many more assets that you can use in your game, I left a link in the description to my Patreon page, everything is there and you help me keep the channel alive. Big thank you to each patron, and as usual a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Al, Elac Frost, Alex Berg Jones, Brandon, David Crew, David Mide Lars, Derek Benson, Donald Thompson, Edward Chai, Goblin Plague, Jeremy Martin, Josh McCormick, Jules Klein, Maxim, Madhav Gupta, Mingao Zhu, Mograf Tech, Nat Sims, Oitsk, Ovi Sands, Radioactive Bullfrog, Razol Sharifi, Revenant Games, Roger Powers, Stefan Zarkov, Unknown Enigma, Verisuta, YY, Zarad Redding, and Ingo Das. Your support is super appreciated, guys. Thank you. To everyone who watched this, I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next video, as usual. Subscribe, like, and share with every game developer you know. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Bye.